since last Monday, we've really accelerated this project. It's been a fast track project with the cooperation of our federal partners, FHWA, uh, basically all the, the contractor, JD Ackman. We have a great team. Okay, okay. We had, we've had a great team put together with the prime contractor, JD Ackman, as well as uh, a great design team, AECOM, the Dell Dot staff, the FHWA. We've got a lot of experts on board. So I'm going to walk you through basically what we've done today, or uh, since last Monday. Uh, as you can see to my left here, the stockpile, over 50,000 50, tons of uh, material has actually been removed from the site. So uh, that actually was completed uh, by late Sunday, the majority of it. There was some uh, topsoil stockpile material that was later removed that night, uh, uh, Monday the next day. Since that point, we've actually, if you look above me, you'll see right here is what we call the Dewey Dags. Basically, they're t uh, these rods that hold the pier together. We've basically completed all of that, 11, 12, 13, and we're working on 14 right now. And it creates basically the units now, the piers, the hammers he heads act like one unit now. Uh, since that time, we've also be, uh, done the site preparation. Uh, we were able to uh, get a right to trespass agreement with the uh, DuPont property owners to my right and both to the left. So we brought in stone as a staging area. We brought in equipment over here to the, my background. Basically, we have basically a drill uh, shaft. It's, uh, it's got a, ke a Kelly uh, rod to it, and it, that's a machine that's actually going to drive these large four-foot diameter shafts down deep into the ground, anywhere from 140 feet to 170 feet down into bedrock. Uh, that's very critical to the uh, progression of this project. It's, it's a uh, critical path. And so uh, uh, currently right now we've also mobilized uh, a contractor from Texas. Uh, their name is A.H. Beck. Uh, they specialize in this type of foundation work as well as Pearson. Uh, and A.H. Beck is going to be actually here on Monday and uh, Pearson's already on site here with their equipment. In the background also you'll see a large crane. That's a 200 foot, 275 ton crane. It's a lattice boom crane that's going to help support and feed these cranes with casing, rebar cages. Eventually, we're going to punch holes in the deck to speed up the acceleration of this work. We're going to punch holes through the deck and basically drop the casings as well as the rebar cages into these large diameter holes that we go down to bedrock. That, um, and in addition, once that gets done, uh, we're also built, excuse me, on the very back, Pier 14, we're into the river, the Christina River, and we're building a causeway. That causeway is needed in order to basically set our large cranes and also do our drill shaft foundation work. Uh, that's what you hear all the noise in the background going on currently. Uh, we've also gotten uh, clearance from the Army Corps of Engineers, our uh, Denerec friends. Uh, basically, we've worked with all the environmental agencies to make sure that we handle the material properly. In front of me, there's a rain for rent. We handle basically all water that's coming off the site. It, 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 does, it doesn't pose a health, a health risk, but it does have some contaminants in there that we have to treat and we just can't dispose of. So everything here that you see, we're managing on site. Uh, in the background here, you have the geotechs, and they're wrapping it up today. They're doing the basically uh, deep exploratory work to see what type of soils we have. So with that when these big rigs drop their casings and they actually drill down, they understand what kind of soils we are, we're dealing with. So as you can see, we've really moved uh, very aggressively, and we, could, we will continue to move very aggressively on this project until we get it done. Uh, thank you. Give me your name. Sure. My, my name is Javier Torrijos. Yes, J-A-V-I-E-R. And the last name is Torrijos, T as in Tom, O-R-R-I-J-O-S. And I'm the Assistant Director of Construction for DelDot. Yeah, thank you. We call them Hav because none of us can roll our R's like that. Uh, so um, I know that uh, we've got uh, some pretty important people here today, and we're very uh, uh, glad that they came, and I'm going to keep my remarks very short. I just want to tell you, if you look back there, we've got casings that came here from Oklahoma. We have cages that have just arrived here from New York from the Tappan Z project. we got contractors behind you with the, the, the hard hats and the vests. We are moving. I mean, literally, this would be something that you'd be looking at happening a few months down the road in a normal situation, and we have hit the ground running, and we are going 24-7, and we will be until this bridge gets open. 
And uh, I just think it's fitting that the U.S. Secretary of Transportation is here because this is going to end up being a nationwide effort. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, my governor, Jack Markell, who has just been uh, just been awesome and supportive as we've been going through this. He's been in the loop and has just been uh, awesome to, uh, to to give us some support. Governor? Uh, thank you. Uh, so I want to thank, uh, first of all, Secretary Batt, uh, who has just been all over this with the team uh, from Del Dot. Very appreciative to all of the men and women uh, of Del Dot and the other agencies who have been so focused on this. Uh, I want to thank uh, Senator Margaret Rose Henry and Representative J.J. Uh, Johnson, uh, who are here. We're in their district. They've been very supportive, very focused, uh, and uh, great advocates for uh, the, their constituents to make sure that we uh, do this as quickly obviously as safely as we can. I also want to thank the congressional delegation. Uh, I literally heard from all three of them within, I think, minutes of, uh, of this news breaking with one question, and they asked, what is it that we can do to help? And that's always the response that I get uh, from Senator Carper and Senator Coons and Congressman Carney. Uh, very grateful to them. And of course, you all know, because I took the phone call the last time I was here from Secretary Fox, who, again, I mean, they were just all over it, and they could not have responded any more quickly. So we're really grateful for all the levels of government that are coming together to, uh, to support uh, this effort. We know how important it is uh, that this uh, bridge be opened as quickly as we can. That's why it is, uh, you know, a, just a 24-7 a, a uh, operation, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure this is done quickly and safely, and that's really that's, that's the bottom line. I also want to thank the mayor. I don't know if the mayor's here or not. I think he was here. I know he's obviously been very interested uh, as well. Uh, with that, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Congressman Carney, uh, who is, uh, when we were just inside a few minutes ago, was giving some excellent suggestions to Secretary Batt about some of the traffic uh, conditions he's seeing out there, and we are very appreciative of his support. First, I want to thank uh, the governor for being so responsive uh, to the calls from my office and the delegation taking the leadership uh, on this uh, really uh, difficult uh, situation. And in particular, I want to thank the secretary for coming today. Uh, we just saw each other a couple days ago as uh, Secretary Fox met with about 20 of us in the House of Representatives about, and we talked about issues around our district. And obviously, this was the one that I wanted to talk about. I knew I would see him here today and I'm just delighted that uh, he is here and impressed with the way he just rolls up his sleeve and gets to work. He's a former mayor so he's used to getting things done and he's here uh, to do just that for all of us. Uh, Hav mentioned cooperation wherever Hav is uh, and it's the cooperation that has gone into this already is really incredible from across our country obviously with the secretary coming in today we need cooperation from our constituents going forward. Because as I tried to get over here today, there was incredible traffic getting through the city of Wilmington. Obviously, this is a Friday uh, during the summer months. And I did have some suggestions for Secretary Bott about how we could improve on that. And the cooperation that we're getting from him in the city of Wilming Wilmington has been tremendous. And I would just ask for that same cooperation among all our constituents. Uh, and with that, I'd pass the microphone over to our, our junior senator, Senator Coons, who's got a very important role as a member of the Appropriations Committee. Thank you, thank you Congressman. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Governor Markell, and uh, thank you, Secretary Bott, uh, and to Javier Torrios and everybody, the department and the contractor teams who are working together so tirelessly, so thoroughly to address this critical problem. Um, over ahead of us goes one of the absolutely essential arteries of our nation's federal highway system. Uh, and this artery, well, it got clogged. It had a problem. It had a structural flaw that led to essentially a heart attack, a seizure of one piece, one critical artery of our national highway system. And today, 90,000 folks a day are finding another way around this blockage. And I am grateful that we have a state with such a capable and competent leadership that is stepping up to this challenge and I am particularly grateful uh, that we've got a United States Secretary uh, who understands what it means to be promptly responsive. This challenge is just another reminder uh, for all of us in your congressional delegation that we have to solve our nation's highway funding problem. 
The Federal Highway Trust Fund is out of money in August, and I serve on the Budget Committee and the Appropriations Committee, and I'm excited to support my senior senator who is on Environment and Public Works. Public Works is working on the reauthorization, uh, and we in Budget and Appropriations are working on uh, the funding and the disbursement, and between us, we hope to contribute to a resolution of this critical problem. So if I could to Mr. Secretary, uh, we are so grateful for your being with us today. Uh, the calling was good, the coming is great, but the funding, the funding is what we are excited to work on together and make sure that we deliver uh, the badly needed federal funding to get this project moving quickly and to get this artery opened again. Uh, let me introduce uh, my senior senator who I'm proud to work with every day, uh, who is responsible uh, for a lot of what has gotten done over his many years of public service as governor, as senator, uh, no one understands the importance of federal and state uh, partnership more than my senior senator, Tom Carper. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, I-495. Uh, this is we're standing like a half a mile from where the first Swedes and Fens sailed uh, to America and passed right up as the sector. Came right by uh, this spot and uh, to declare Wilmington, Delaware, the colony of New Sweden. And uh, as they passed through, one, one Swede said to a friend, he said, you know, this would be a great place to have a bridge if they ever have an interstate system. Well, it turned out this is one of thousands of bridges that we have across the country. One of thousands. One out of every nine is structurally deficient. Structurally deficient. We just found out about this one. Secretary Fox and I worked along with our colleagues, Senator Coons and uh, Congressman Carney. We worked not on a, uh, an emergency like this, but what we worked is to make sure that there's other hundreds of bridges that are structurally deficient uh, get addressed, get fixed. And uh, Chris was good enough to mention there has to be money appropriated for it. Thank you very much for coming up with $2 million, I think, in response to the governor's request to, to get started on this. First, uh, I think $20 million of the repair, the emergency repair, is 100% federal money. And I believe uh, that anything beyond that is about 90% federal money. But the state needs some money, too. The state needs some money, too, and I don't know if there are any legislators close by, but if there are, keep in mind that in order to match the federal money, 90 cents for a dime, we need the dime. And uh, we also need the 90 cents. And one of the things that the Secretary and I and my colleagues are working on is to make sure we do our share at the federal level, raising money across the country, not just for bridges like this, but for all the other hundreds and thousands that are deficient, too. Secretary Fox, thank you for being a big part of our team. We're delighted to, to welcome you to Delaware. I've gotten to know this guy pretty well, like him a lot. We're uh, fortunate that he is providing the leadership. He doesn't just hang out in his office. He doesn't just hang out in, uh, in, uh, in Washington, D.C. He hangs out with us. Welcome to Wilmington. Welcome, welcome to the colony of New Sweden. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Senator Carper, and to Senator Coons and Congressman Carney, uh, to Secretary Bott, to Governor Markell. I want to thank all of you for having me here. Uh, I never like to see a calamity such as this happen in our country. Um, but what I can tell you is, is that these officials, uh, whether it's the delegation in Washington or the state officials, acted quickly, worked with our teams. We were able to get emergency release money done within a few short hours after the incident to get put to work to get this bridge back up and going. And the work that's happening here is the product of some aggressive work on behalf of these teams, and I want to thank all of you for the great work you're doing. I also want to mention that as we stand here under I-495, this isn't just a Delaware issue. This is a national issue. Uh, when this bridge goes down, the ability of folks to travel all the way south into Miami, all the way up the eastern seaboard, is impacted. So it is a big deal that we get this bridge back up and going. But as Senator Carper and others have pointed out, one of the challenges we face right now as a country is that we have much more infrastructure that needs to be repaired, much more infrastructure that needs to be built than we have the dollars available to do. And that is why we are so concerned that just in just a few short weeks in August, the Highway Trust Fund, what funds our highways and our transit systems, it's going to run short. When it runs short, it's going to mean that states all across this country are going to either slow down or even stop projects from moving forward, critical projects that support 
our country, our quality of life, the efficient flow of goods, and the efficient flow of people. And it is with that that the President and I put forth the Grow America Act, an act designed to not only get us back to where we've been funding-wise, but to move us ahead, to invest in our roads and our bridges and our transit systems and our rail systems, and to keep America moving forward. It's unfortunate that sometimes an incident like this reminds us of what we have as a country. But hopefully, as we get this work going, as the bridge comes back up, the medal of the American people will descend on to Washington. And with these great senators and these great congressmen, uh, Congressman Carney, who I know get this issue, and we'll get something done in Washington and move America forward. So thank you very much. It's good to be here. And I want to thank all these folks for the good work they're doing, including the construction workers, these folks out here who are doing the hard work. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, and uh, just to echo on Secretary Fox's comments, I want to thank all of the contractors, whether they're Delaware contractors like Diamond, who is moving the uh, material back and forth out here, who moved that 50,000 tons of dirt uh, in, in what working around the clock 24-7. Uh, J.D. Ekman, who is the, uh, the firm that's managing this, who literally uh, came in the day after, brought pulled people off of other jobs. They've been going 24-7. I was talking to one of their, their folks early who hasn't seen his kids since uh, last Wednesday, uh, but that's really the, uh, the just the, the, the can-do spirit that is down here and that is going to get this uh, bridge reopened very quickly.